So we move to our next talk. Um, I remind you that if you want to ask any questions, either from the room or remotely, you can go to onlinequestions.org, event 2147, uh, and ask questions there or vote for questions that have already been asked. Uh, our next talk is about GStreamer on the Magic Leap one. Uh, please welcome Xavier. Hi, so I'm Xavier working at Collabora. Uh, today I'm presenting uh, GStreamer. So the work I've done last year to port GStreamer on a Magic Leap one device, uh, showing it there. So those are, those are augmented reality glasses. So the Magic Leap is building those glasses and they are selling it uh, online. Um, Augmented reality is uh, glasses you can see through. So you see your own, uh, the real world environment, and you can add virtual elements inside your, your living room or anywhere you are. And for example, you can add a, a, a TV screen on the, on the wall in your living room. And um, when you can watch TV like that with the glasses, that's not the same thing as VR, because virtual reality is a completely opaque device, so you can't see anything from the real world. Um, you see only virtual uh, environment. And um, so if you walk, you just walk into the world. And uh, that's not happening with uh, AR. Uh, Magic Leap has three elements. So first, you have the glasses, and then the glasses is the, the, the light wire, and uh, the, um, the light pack is connected with uh, a cable. You cannot remove the cable, so that the light pack, the light pack, uh, light pack is the, um, the computer itself doing all the CPU and GPU. And um, so all the, all the stuff I'm going to, to, to code is going to run on the, the small round uh, computer there. And of course, you have a controller to manipulates a uh, virtual object. So a bit of specs. Uh, the light pack uh, is where the, the OS is running. It's an NVIDIA Tegra X2 uh, chipset with six, six core and um, it's ARM64. Um, the OS is uh, called LuminOS. It's based on Android, but there is no Java. So basically, as far as I know, they, do, they are doing that to get vendor support from NVIDIA, probably. And um, the media stack is what I really concentrate on, and uh, it, uh, it is stage, stage right from Android. There is a public uh, SDK. It has uh, a complete C API for everything. So um, on Android, you have Java API to write Java code, but they write everything in C uh, for the, the, the middleware. And you have a C++ API for all the, the UI toolkits and the more advanced uh, features. Um, yeah, they have, for, for the audio side, they have custom APIs. That's something I've never seen uh, on Android, so I, they, they, they brought it from scratch. And uh, they also work from scratch their own build system called Mabu, because we don't have enough build system yet. Um, the project I've been working on uh, with Corabora uh, was sponsored by Mozilla. Uh, Mozilla has their new browser called Servo. Um, Servo is written in Rust. Uh, it's a brand new browser. And they want to, uh, to port it to various uh, VR and AR uh, devices. And they had an issue because they port it on Magic Leap device, but they cannot render any media. So the video and audio was not working because they are using GStreamer for, on desktop to, to play all the media. But they couldn't uh, port Magic Leap, uh, GStreamer to Magic Leap device. So they contacted us at Collabora, Collabora and uh, we helped them to, to port it. Uh, so yeah, Servo is written in Rust. Uh, the, so the build system is Cargo, so yet another build system. 
um, they have various byte and uh, scripts on top of Cargo to drive the build. Um, yeah, so Alan Jeffrey already did, before contacting me, they already did all the porting of uh, Servo to Magic Leap, except for the multimedia part. Um, so I'm not, I won't, I won't be speking about that, that journey from, from them. They have a blog post already uh, telling all the, all the story for that side, uh, concentrating on the multimedia part here. Um, yeah, so the, for the video, they, they are using an uh, app sync. Uh, that, means for the, that means that every, the, they don't let GStreamer rendering the, the video. They get the frames uh, out of GStreamer and they render them uh, themselves in their application. Um, and for the audio, they let, on the opposite side, and for the audio, they let GStreamer do, all, every, do everything that itself. So GStreamer is supposed to detect the platform and plug the, the, the right audio sync. Of course, there is no audio sync for Magic Leap yet. So GStreamer, that's a multimedia framework written in C. Um, they had an auto tools build system. Thankfully, it's uh, removed now, and it, it's fully Mason build system now. So that's the third build system in my presentation. Um, yeah. So. Um, GStreamer already has support for Android, uh, but they are using the, G the Java API through GNI. Um, so, yeah, GStreamer is like, as for people that don't know GStreamer, it's like a, a pipeline when you have elements you can connect together to, to write your, um, your, your rendering. Um, so the first step is to actually build GStreamer. Uh, using the, the SDK, there are two, two ways possible. Either you use uh, GST builds or you use uh, Cerbero. Uh, G GST builds use Mason and has many sub projects to build every single de dependency you can, uh, at, at least the art dependency, but there are some optional dependencies that it cannot build yet. Uh, on the other side, Cerbero. Um, they can build every possible dependency with their own build system, and, um, but it's more complicated and less integrated. So since I'm a Mason developer, I uh, decided to go with the GST build, uh, a new way of doing things, and I've not been using uh, Cerbero for, for, uh, for this work. Because one of the main reasons is that on Magic Leap, I didn't need any external dependency. Uh, so my project was really like small scope, so I don't have to depend on any uh, auto tools library, external <coughs> libraries, etc. So I decided to go with uh, GST build and use only Mason for that. Um, yeah. Uh, so the first thing to do is write a cross file uh, using the, the because there is a tool chain. Uh, in the uh, Magic Leap SDK, you can download. There is a, dual sh a tool chain there. You write a, cro a cross file, compile, and hopefully it works, right? Uh, so the, the cross file is something like that, a bit simplified here. But yeah, so you, de you define your, you, you, you pretend it's Android because GStreamer has many uh, special cases for Android and. Um, you want to use those special cases. Uh, you define that it's an uh, ARM64 uh, uh, architecture. And yeah, yeah, like you see here, uh, a little bit trick I did. Uh, I don't write the full path to all those uh, binaries. Uh, I've got a, <clears throat> a variable there, Magic Leap SDK. Um, uh, at, at the beginning, I was using this file that was actually uh, processed by SED just to replace all the variables before passing that to, to Mason. But spoiler alert, I have a merge request on Mason to support that kind of syntax inside Mason itself. So you don't have to repeat all the full path where you installed your, your tool chain anymore. Um, yeah, so the first issue I, I, I went, uh, when building GStreamer is that uh, glib depends of IconV, 
And the SDK from Magic Leap actually has icon v.h, the header, but surprisingly, they don't have the impl implementation. Usually, the implementation comes from the libc, but no symbols there. Don't know why. Um, so I had to build uh, icon v from the GNU project. Um, of course, that's yet another build system, auto tools now, sad face. <laughs> but I can handle it. Uh, configure, make, make, install, uh, all the good stuff, and uh, it works. It, it builds. You can install that in the path somewhere, and you can uh, add the, the dash L and dash I uh, flags in your meson cross file to pick the, the icon V implementation you just built. Um, Next step, so with that icon v, uh, issue fixed, uh, you can actually now build the full GStreamer hit past. And the problem is, it's, it, does, is it does it too well. You have many, like more than 100 plugins builds, but you don't care about them. One trick I use, it's a really nice feature you have in Mason, is you can disable all, all the features altogether with the auto features equal disabled. That means that with GST builds, if you do that, it will disable every single plugin and build really the minimum, the lib uh, GStreamer core, and nothing else. Um, and then you can add yourself the, the, the exact plugins you want to enable, and it will, be, it will build just that. So you save a lot of time and a lot of uh, memory because uh, the full build uh, takes like almost 200 megabytes for your, the application you want to ship. But if you enable only the few things, it's, uh, it's down to less than 10 megabytes. Um, yeah, so, so there are a few options you have to pass. Uh, you want to enable GL, of course, uh, the GL support in, uh, in GStreamer. Uh, on Magic Leap device, they have GL ES2 on EGL uh, platform. Uh, and yeah, the, the Windows system, it's, I fake it to Android because Android is already implemented in GStreamer and it's really similar um, on Magic Leap. Uh, yeah, another trick again, uh, I had the, that idea uh, when working on this project is um, when, G, when GStreamer builds itself, it, uh, you get every plugin as a separate library. And that's not really convenient if you want to package that in your application because you have many files to compile, to, to copy inside your package. And Magic Leap Device was actually not really happy with that because they don't let you uh, have any DL open on any shared object uh, outside the binary the folder. So you cannot split like on distribution, you have a gstreamer-1.0 subdirectory in, the, in your slash lib. And um, to, so gstreamer will only look for plugins there. But you cannot do that trick on Magic Leap because they have security rules that forbid that. So you cannot DL open those files. So one trick I, uh, I've done is um, if you build, that's a patch uh, still waiting for review on, uh, on GitLab if someone from gstreamer uh, developers want to, to give it a try. Um, if you build GStreamer with uh, default library against uh, static, uh, it will build every plugin as a static uh, plugin. And at the end, it's going, there's uh, added, added a, a, a bit of code in their Amazon file that bring all those static libraries, build them in, into a single libgstreamer lib full a shared uh, library, and it also generates uh, a small C file that um, register all the plugins you just built. So you have a single uh, function to call to initialize all the static plugins, and you can use one single shared uh, library, and uh, don't, you don't have to, to manage all those plugins and DL open anymore. You just directly uh, link to that uh, library. So now that we have GStreamer built, a small version of GStreamer with one single library, 
the next step is to build that into a, a Magic Leap application package. So uh, as I said, that's the Mabu uh, build system, custom from Magic Leap. They wrote that I don't think there is anyone else using that. I think they wrote that them, themselves. Uh, luckily, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, you define the include path you want. Uh, so I gave them the, the, the path where I installed uh, my GStreamer, uh, glib, and uh, et cetera, everything that uh, GST builds. Uh, built, and you can c just copy some files. So that's the data uh, list. Those files are just copied inside the, 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 the application package. So as you see, there's only two files to copy, the, the GStreamer full uh, shared library and that icon V uh, shared library because they don't, they don't have it. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, you just have in your main application, you just have to call GST init and that new function GST init static plugins. Uh, that new function is implemented to the G, uh, GStreamer full uh, shell library. Um, and that's it. You can actually already, with that, you can already run GStreamer on your, on your device, but you have no codex. Um, yeah, so for the codex part, uh, of course you want to use the codex from the platform. You don't want to use uh, software decoders. So um, if you look inside the public SDK, you will find uh, media codec and media codec list. And if you open them, it's really surprising. You actually have one for one exactly the same API as the Android Java API. They just translated it in a C and it's exactly the same API. Um, so that's, that's actually a good thing for me because GStreamer already, already has that Android Media Codec uh, EMC plug plugin uh, working. Uh, the, the only issue with that is that, um, so GStreamer used the Java API, so I had to um, move all those GNI codes uh, separate it in, uh, behind the wrapper layer and implement that wrapper layer with the Magic Leap um, API. So you can, at build time, select if you are building it for uh, Magic Leap or for Android. And all the rest of the code is exactly the same. So that's a, a really good uh, way of sharing that code. And those patches are already merged in GStreamer Master. Uh, so that's coming soon in uh, 118. Um, yeah, so yeah, and now that that's an extra option you have to pass to, um, to Mezen uh, to, enable, to enable in GST plugins bad the magic leap option that will uh, select that new um, implementation for the codex. Uh, video sync now. Um, so as I said, the, the, the codex produce uh, GL texture external e o OES, um, but Servo was, was expecting texture 2D. Um, so I, I did not work on that, but Mozilla had to modify their application to actually to support both formats for the textures because so they have the app there are apps that get those textures, those GL textures, and they have to modify their code to, to support that. Uh, to render that, um, you actually write a Magic Leap application with a planar resource object. That's like a widget that exposes you an EGL context. Uh, so you can draw with uh, yourself with the EGL um, API on that uh, surface. Um, yeah, so you have to, uh, to handle the EGL context uh, sharing with GStreamer because GStreamer has its own context uh, for, the, for the decoder. And so the decoder produces a texture with the, its own uh, context, but the, you have to tell GStreamer about your uh, application context. So uh, GStreamer can share those both contexts so you can use the texture inside the uh, application context as well. Um, 
uh, sadly, you cannot use GL image sync directly. Uh, I, I tried to use it, but there is some slight missing API there uh, because they don't expose uh, the native window. Uh, I'm pretty sure inside that uh, planar resources, they, there must be a native window, but the API don't, don't give you a pointer to it, so you, can, you cannot uh, pass. Usually, you would pass that uh, native window down to GL image sync, and it, uh, the sync will do all the rendering for you. But since you don't have that pointer, you cannot do that, so you, have, you must use that app sync and do the rendering yourself. Um, a bit frustrating because it's really missing just one single getter just to get there. <laughs> Maybe they will add it later. Uh, audio sync part. Um, they have two completely different uh, objects, uh, header files, uh, mlaudio.h and audionode.h. One is C, low level API, and the other one is C++, high level API. Um, the reason for that is um, there are two ways for rendering audio uh, on Magic Leap device. Um, the, the device itself has stereo speakers right onto the, your, your ears. Um, but since the source of the audio is somewhere in the 3D world, um, either you can just play the audio plainly as a stereo, stereo audio, but you, do not, you cannot really know from where the, the, the audio comes. And that's the C API, what the C API implements. But the C++ API is smarter because that's actually a widget that you can plug inside your UI. It's an invisible uh, widget, but that tells the audio stream exactly from where in the space the audio comes. And there, that widget is capable of uh, modifying the audio you send to, to sounds like if it comes from that position. So if, you to, if there is a, vi a video wall here and you turn your head, you hear the audio coming from there. It's really impressive. It, that's, that makes all the difference for the immersion you have. Um, yeah, so if you look at those headers, it's really uh, it's weird because it's exactly the same API implemented twice, one in C and one in C++. Um, so it's exactly the same uh, calls. So I've wrote in GStreamer uh, a wrapper again, uh, so you can pick one of them at runtime. Um, yeah, so if you want to use the, the 3D uh, uh, spatial uh, audio, um, you have to tell to GStreamer uh, exactly, you have to pass that audio node object, C++ object, down to GStreamer, so GStreamer can use that object instead of using the plain uh, C, uh, C API. Um, so I wrote that a new element in GStreamer called ML Audio, or ML Audio Sync. And when that audio sync wants to render audio, it's, um, uh, it's, um, it's going to pop a message on the bus, and the application is supposed to reply to that message going, uh, with the pointer to that audio node object. And if you do that, it's going to, to use that, uh, that C++ API, and you get really nice uh, spatial audio. Upstreaming. Um, so thanks to Mozilla for sponsoring all that work. Um, and they even sponsored this upstreaming of, of all that work. So everything is already merged. So you can use that with GStreamer Master right away. Uh, thanks to Olivier Kretz, uh, who did all the review. Uh, you can also find a standalone applications uh, demo at that URL. And that, uh, that demo uh, is not using servo, so it's just a plain video player uh, you can try. And we have a demo at IBC showing that. Um, yeah, coming that next uh, GStreamer release. And now the demo because GStreamer is always tested with uh, video testers. <laughs> As you can see, um, Magic Leap is capable of detecting the, the surfaces and cut the video at the right place.
There we go. Any question? Thank you. We have, uh, we have no question online. Uh, we have a question from the uh, remote, uh, remotely, uh, the people who attend remotely. Asking if you can put the slides in full screen. It's difficult to do it all the time because we want to see you. Um, <laughs> we try, but uh, your slides are downloadable from the website, yeah. from the Fordham website, because we're well behaved. Uh, exactly. That's good. Uh, all speakers should do that. Uh, any question from the floor? We can take one question. Yes, please. You mentioned that there was one letter missing um, in one of your dependencies. Yeah. Be because the, the magically platform is closed source. Uh, oh, sorry. The, so the question is why I don't uh, just make a pull request to add the getter, the missing getter, for uh, to be able to use uh, GL image sync. The reason is that the platform is closed source, so I, so I cannot just do a pull request. Uh, they have an issue tracker, uh, so I already, actually, some of the APIs I'm using right now were missing. So I did some uh, requests to get them. Um, but yeah, you're right that I, I could request that API as well. Uh, I don't think I reported that issue yet. Very quickly, is this augmented reality helmet widely available? Uh, widely not, but I think it's, you can buy it in the U US only, uh, just for a few thousand bucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyone can buy it. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. <laughs>